Four years ago, when the West, backed by NATO, went into Libya, overthrew it, and turned the country over to Al Qaeda and Saudi Arabian backed groups, we predicted we'd start seeing jihad attacks in the West, threats to shoot down jetliners with these stolen Stinger missiles, and more. What I didn't expect uh, with the Wahhabist globalist shadow armies was for them to then have them lead giant exoduses out of North Africa, the Middle East, and other areas in through Turkey, who then shuttles every one of the borders of Eastern and Western Europe. I mean, that is so bold. And then to have the media with a straight face in unison from the UK to Germany to France to Sweden to Canada to the US to say, it's our job to take millions of people. It's your job to pay for it. The West is evil. We need to pay for everything. And then Donald Trump comes out two days ago and says, yeah, we got to take him. Merkel's doing a great job. He since backpedaled and we have that video that we're going to be playing here. In fact, I know you gave it to me, but can I have another video list? I can't find it. Thank you. And that ties into this story that's the top story on Infowars.com. Hashtag winning 50 spies. Go public. Blow the whistle and report on ISIS. They say that ISIS is being basically protected, that the reports are being altered by higher-ups, they're fixing the intelligence to claim that ISIS isn't spreading or that ISIS isn't run by the West. Absolutely, ISIS is run by the West, and Julian Assange has now put out the documents, which I wish you had done years ago, that before the Arab Spring was launched by the West and by the Obama administration to put radical Islamists in everywhere and then flood Europe, we now see the full master plan That if you go back, they were planning to topple Assad using Al-Qaeda groups even before that. And that has now been released by WikiLeaks. I mean, you can just see the full garment now, the, the full cut of it. And it's now on the runway, fully animated. We now see their full plan. Truly diabolical, beyond a James Bond movie, and all admitted. But the public is so unconscionably, politically, economically, culturally illiterate. We have no culture. Boy, they sure got us on the hook with John Wayne and I Love Lucy and stuff like that. And then once we had the you know public on the hook, we were going down the rat hole. Because once that unfolded, it was basically over. The sky was the limit. Once... Once the hook was in our mouth, sure, a worm's big and juicy and nutritious if you're a bass or a perch or a catfish. But once you bite into that worm, you find out there's cold, hard steel, a big barb on the end, and it goes right through your lip, right underneath your jaw, and you're caught. And then you're hauled up into a whole nother atmosphere, a whole nother world, and you're on the dinner table. And I look at the public raised by television, didn't have parents that were into geopolitics, didn't have parents into history, didn't have parents that took them places and educated them. They have no culture. These are empty, hollow men and women. And into that emptiness, they now pour total racism, everyone hating each other, attacks on language as if language is evil itself, just total cult, Ingsoc 1984, over the top brainwashing. Except 1984 is a book. This is real. I mean, it is so diabolical. And the globalists will keep doing it as long as they think they're immune from justice. No one is immune from justice. Monday through Friday. From 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, we're here live. Broadcasting worldwide. There's a big article in Politico today breaking down the metrics from a bunch of different ratings systems including google that matt drudge's drudgereport.com is the number one news and political website in the world 
even ahead of Facebook.com and all of its billions, more than 2 billion people regularly use Facebook, but it's all atomized. It's all fractured. I mean, we're able to reach 3 million people a day on Facebook with our eight different Facebook platforms that volunteers made for us six, seven years ago whenever it first uh, came out and then handed over to us. But imagine being the number one news destination, political destination in the world, even bigger than Facebook. Matt Drudge, Mark Zuckerberg, Drudge Report editor, Facebook CEO. And it just goes into the fact that basically Drudge is continuing to expand his domination. And they don't even count his Twitter accounts or other things he does. Now, you notice, though, if you listen to people at Media Matters run by the White House that almost has no viewers and, and readers. But it doesn't matter because then the entire controlled media picks up their talking points and regurgitates it. So, yeah, some talking point that you know, the globalists email down doesn't itself on the printout have a big audience. But once it's put out there to be regurgitated and repeated, it is important. <sighs> they, of course, are running around saying Matt Drudge uh, has no viewers. Matt Drudge is dead. Matt Drudge has lost his importance. Matt Drudge is over. And this is a tactic that I see out of dinosaur media against us every day. Alex is a kook. Infowars is stupid. Nobody reads it. Nobody likes it. It's all over. They don't have any success. Ha, ha, ha. This is the tactics of a dying system. Our readership, our viewership, our listenership is growing exponentially by every metric. And so what do they do? They have Amazon.com, Democratic Party run, controlled Alexa, one of the main rating services come out a year ago, and lower the ratings 70% across the board of WorldNet Daily, DrudgeReport.com, Infowars.com, and any other libertarian website. They didn't really do it to mainline Republican sites. They did it to activist sites that are popular and dominating. Well, guess what? You're just not in this Politico article now as a metric. It doesn't matter if you claim that Mike Tyson in his prime wasn't the top heavyweight contender. He was. It doesn't matter if you change metrics overnight and then just declare we have no visitors when it's not true. And the reason I started the whole broadcast with this today is because if you understand this and how these hoaxes and frauds work, it's all over. They're tripling down and quadrupling down on their bravada, arrogance, chutzpah, tuberous-filled dribble because they're desperate. Every major establishment media platform already hemorrhaged out. And big globalist insider corporations, fat off banker bailouts and government contracts, are propping them up because they don't want the embarrassment of admitting they're already dead. It's like National Lampoon's Vacation where they act like the Aunt Edna is still alive and she's not. Or what's that movie? I only saw part of it. Weekend at Bernie's or something where they got the dead body and they're hauling it around. I mean, that's what they're doing is propping up dead bodies, propping up a dead dinosaur, but it smells, it stinks, it's oozing, they're spewing talking points, you can see the failure in their eyes. The only power the zombie horde has is when they get their talking points, if they all, in unison, push a hoax, and then get entertainment media pushing it as well, and get the movies pushing it as well, and get the video games pushing it, and every other platform then they can get the dumbest of the sheeple, the most dumbed down, drooling, unaware, unconscious slugs to adopt what they're saying and to go out and repeat it. But new media is the comment coming to kill the dinosaurs and the comment already hit. They're dead already politically. 
But here's the problem. They're transcending politics and just going to pure psych warfare. Two plus two equals five. You didn't build your business. If we raise the debt ceiling, it doesn't raise the debt. People say that's ridiculous. That's discrediting. No, it's not. When you've got a zombie constituency, they've got new studies out that many people aren't even wiping their butts now. So I was going to be sarcastic and say, these are people that can't even wipe their, their own rear ends. They literally can't. Their constituents believe two plus two equals five. Their constituents say, ban the Bible on the street in unison when they're asked. We played that a couple days ago. In fact, cue that back up. I want to play that. That's so powerful. We're going to go out in Austin and show that as well. We can duplicate it in any trendy area. All these people have is arrogance that they're part of the ruling class when they're not. So that's all they have is a hoax. The problem is they're moving towards totalitarianism because they're losing the political debate. They're moving towards autocratic, technocratic, centralized, command and control. And they've got enough people that are awake but choose to join with Sauron, with the emperor, with the devil, with whatever that archetype is in your mind. That's why we're in so much trouble is there are collaborators who don't even care if this system's pure evil. They are going to choose to prey on the dumb mass and join the predator class, even though it's dishonorable, it's disreputable, it's destructive. And in their hearts, they know they're going to be destroyed in the end by it. But so many globalists tell me it doesn't matter. I'm going to be winning until that happens. And it's because they're cowards. And there's so many evil people and sociopaths that didn't promote good, even though they could have gotten more power out of choosing good, because inherently they don't want to be good. I mean, in a world of sellouts, in a world of idiots, in a world of, of parasites, in a world of predators, being a white knight is king. I am a moral person. I love justice. That's why I chose my path. I didn't do it to be famous. I didn't do it to be rich. I only expanded my operation and tried to gain some wealth to be able to defend myself because I was criticized for imaginary wealth 10 years ago I didn't have. I knew neurotically, like the purest white knight you can imagine, spent 98% of the money coming in and lived in a very humble home and drove a very humble car until people accused me of doing all this for money. And I said, I'll show you money. And now I have enemies lined up to the sun. Great, attack me. We have some backup. We have some depth. We have some strength against the storms. You build a lighthouse on the strong parapet of natural rock and they lecture us knowing we're Christian, knowing we're good. You didn't take enough immigrants. You didn't pay for enough anchor babies. How dare a libertarian group or conservative group sell a book? How dare, how dare World Net Daily sell books? How dare Matt Drudge have advertising? How dare, how dare, how dare, while they have taxpayer money at NPR and taxpayer money at MSNBC, while they suck off of us at gunpoint they sit there and try to lecture us that we shouldn't ever build our own media. Last year, they sued and got the thousands of pages of documents. I want to get Joseph Farah back on because so much of it was so incendiary, he didn't even know if he could release it all. <clears throat> From the Clinton Library in Arkansas, and it was all in the early 90s before Drudge existed, a few years before, when World Net Daily was going online as the Western Journalism Center. They were scared of Farah. And they were scared of independent films like Jeremiah Films, the Clinton Chronicles. And they're talking about how do we shut down new media? It'll be conservative. It'll be libertarian. It'll be liberal. We won't control it. We've got to demonize it. We've got to audit it. We've got to shut it down. We've got to call it conspiracy theorist. I mean, if an independent meteorological group started and said that, you know, they thought rain was coming, they call it a conspiracy theory. It's a way to shut down any intellectual debate that they don't control. And you can read the whole thing right there because they knew then if they allowed an open free market of ideas, that would be the end of them. I mean, who wants some old criminal witch like Hillary Clinton 